guys and happy Monday. It was actually afternoon. Um, I started my morning off at the coffee shop. I am in my final week of my family medicine rotation. Uh, last Friday was our last clinical day and this week we have off to prepare for the shelf exam which is on Friday. So this morning I got through most of my to-do list. I just have a few pediatric things that I need to um, continue to do later. But it's about 12 o'clock and it's time for me to take a study break because I am pretty hungry. Um, I want to walk over to the nail, uh, the nail salon really quick to get this gel polish off. Yeah, it's about that time for this to come off. So I'm just going to head over there now. Alright, polish off headed home so I got an email notification from my leasing office that a package has arrived it's HelloFresh so I'd like to thank the lovely people over at HelloFresh for sending me a box for this week I'm gonna go ahead and open it up and let you guys know all about HelloFresh so HelloFresh is a meal kit delivery service they deliver meals straight to your door with fresh ingredients and all of the ingredients are measured out so you're not gonna waste anything so you go to their website and you pick the plan that you want. For me, I got the three meals per week and I got the two person plan. And then after that, you pick the selection that you want. So you can do the classic, the veggie, or the family. There's many different options for you. HelloFresh is great for anybody that wants to start eating healthy or anybody that wants to get creative in the kitchen but can't quite think of the meals to prepare for themselves. So these are the three meals that I was sent for this week. Um, and it comes in these three bags with all the ingredients in it. And it has step-by-step -step directions on how to make it. And today I'm gonna be going for the flatbread. So I'll put these to the side. And as you can see, I have previous HelloFresh menus in here as well. All right, so these are all the ingredients that came in that package to make this meal. So you got the flatbread, basil, zucchini, um, the cherry tomatoes, garlic, uh, lemon, chili flakes, honey, and the ricotta. All right, so I just finished up one, which is prepping all of the produce, the tomatoes, lemon, zucchini, and some garlic. Now I'm gonna move on to step two, which is cooking the zucchini. All right, while the zucchini is cooking, I am moving on to step three, which is the cherry tomatoes. I add a little bit of olive oil, salt, pepper, and I'm gonna add the garlic to it. All right, so step four adds for calling the ricotta cheese, um, one tablespoon of lemon juice, lemon zest, olive oil, and salt and pepper. So I'm gonna add all that in now. All right, so I put the cheese on both the flatbreads, uh, top this one, and now I'm just gonna do it to the second one. All right, so I'm just gonna put it in the oven until the crust browns, so that should be about 10 minutes. All right, guys, it is all done. And here is the picture comparison. Let's see how it tastes. And when I took it out the oven, I topped it with um, basil, honey, and chili flakes. All right, let's see how it tastes. It's pretty good. So it's always nice trying different meals and different recipes. So if you guys like to try out HelloFresh, um, you can get $80 off your first month using the code PRECIOUS80. I'm gonna leave a link to that in the description box. Good morning, guys. So I just got to campus. Um, we have a meeting with one of the faculty this afternoon to pretty much review um, our OSCE, which is like the clinical exam that we took. It's not until two, but I decided to just come to campus early and get a little bit of studying done. So I haven't studied on campus in forever. I didn't even realize that they're doing construction, so now I have to take a different entrance to the library. Hmm. All right, I am in. It's bringing me back to Second year study days. My favorite cubicle. Supper boy. Supper, supper boy. Oh, ay, oh, ay, oh, ay. Come on, 
Yeah. American boy, but Italian in my heritage. Same team from the bus stop, tearing shit up. I be where it's not enough to be a well fit. He think he blowing up, now put some more air in here. I don't need to care about the things that you say. I'ma turn the whole game into two lanes. So I just finished up my meeting um, regarding the OSCE exam that we took and it was pretty good feedback because we have to take step two and it's two parts of it. Step two CK, that's like the written multiple choice. And then step two CS is the clinical exam. So taking the OSCEs throughout the year, which are like clinical exams with um, standardized patients that helps you prep for step two CS. So pretty good feedback today on that. But now I'm just about to head home. So match day was last Friday, so I want to give a big congrats to all the fourth years that found out um, that they matched. It's probably the most exciting time um, as a medical student because, I mean, that's the culmination of like all your hard work through medical school. You figure out what specialty and what program you're going to be training at, and you figure out if you have a job pretty much after graduation. So yeah, pretty exciting time. Well, you already know what specialty you're going into. I should say you figure out what uh, program you're going to be training at on um, match day. But I know a lot of people that's not in medicine are kind of confused about how the match process works and what it entails. So pretty much your fourth year, you apply to residency programs. So say, for instance, you're going into internal medicine. You're going to apply to all these internal medicine programs. You're going to go on interviews. And let's say you go on 15 interviews. At the end of interview season, you rank those programs number 1 to 15 based on which one you want to go to the most. And then in turn, the residency program ranks the applicants 1 through whatever based on, you know, who they want into their program. Then you both submit your rank list and then the computer system generates the perfect match for you. So if everything works out, you end up getting maybe your number 1, 2, or 3 choice and that's how you're matched. And you open up your envelope on that Friday and that's when you figure out what program you're going to be training at. So you can imagine the anxiety is high on match day. A lot of students are anxious. Your family, your friends come to the ceremony with you and you all find out together, you know, where you're going to be at. And prior to Friday, on Monday, you find out if you do or don't match. So on Monday, you receive an email. And then Friday, you show up and do match day when you open up your envelope. So, of course, they don't want people showing up on Friday and they figure out, oh, I didn't even match. So you find out uh, that information earlier in the week. And matching is not guaranteed for every student. You know, some students, a handful of students or a certain percentage of students go unmatched every year. You know, there's more applicants than there are spots in residency programs. So every year, especially for the more competitive programs, there are going to be some unmatched students. Um, you know, if you don't match, they have this thing called SOAP where you can then apply for the unfilled positions in some residency programs. Or you can take a year off and try again next year. So... It's, it's tough if you don't match, but it is definitely a possibility for students. And so now, as an upcoming fourth year, I'm going to be applying to residency this year, and I will be matching next March, claiming it now. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, I'm starting the process now of getting my application together. So I'm working on my personal statement, working on um, my CV, because I'm going to be applying to away rotation soon. And so essentially what away rotations are, are like month-long audition interviews into the programs that you may want to go into. So let's say, for instance, you're applying to dermatology. You want to do away rotations at other programs around the country that you potentially want to go to. So they recommend anywhere from two to three, just depending on what your specialty is. And so you have to apply into those away rotations. So yeah, that's what I have been up to lately. Um, that's kind of like a preview of fourth year. But for now, I need to prepare for this shelf exam that I have on Friday. Well, to continue to prepare. Um, I think I'm pretty good. I just need to continue doing some practice questions and reviewing a few things like antibiotics. So I'm still going to be using sketchy med for that. And some of the screening guidelines and vaccines. Vaccines is something you just have to repetition, keep on, keep on looking at it because it's pretty much just memorization. So for dinner, I went ahead and made another HelloFresh meal. I went with this one. And oh my gosh, I already tried it. It turned out so good. Have leftovers, gonna eat that tomorrow for lunch. But this is probably my favorite Hello Fresh meal.
So I just got back from the coffee shop. Um, I went there to study this morning. I wanted to take a little study break and then just talk a little bit about my overall experience with uh, family medicine. And to my surprise, family medicine has been my favorite rotation throughout 30 years so far. I definitely was not expecting that. But yeah, I've just enjoyed this rotation the most so far. And I mentioned and talked about it in my previous family med vlog so you guys can kind of see like what it all entails. Like, you know, OB-GYN, pediatrics, um, the whole organ system going from head to toe. You know, you just have to know a lot for family medicine. And as I was going through this rotation, I was wondering, you know, why is family medicine one of the easiest special specialties to get into? Because it's a pretty difficult specialty to practice in, just the breadth of knowledge that you have to have. And it was interesting, we had um, a session last week um, regarding upcoming fourth year and residency applications. And our dean was telling us the reason why family medicine um, is considered like the easiest program to get into is because supply and demand like there is such a need for family medicine physicians for primary care physicians which is why it could be considered easier to get into it has nothing to do with the difficulty of the specialty because family medicine is definitely not an easy specialty and so for me I spent half my time at an outpatient uh, private practice and then the other half at an urgent care and I definitely experienced um, I mean I definitely enjoyed both experiences and I had great preceptors great teachers with both sites and I think a lot of what I love so much about family medicine is that I got to do finally like a lot of hands-on you know work you know taking on my own patients coming up with plans for the patients and I feel like that really helped me grow as a student. And I feel like my knowledge base from the beginning of the year to now has just grown so much. And, you know, I really noticed a difference on this rotation. So, could I see myself going into family medicine? I think the answer to that is going to have to be no. Um, I do love the relationship that family medicine doctors have with their patients. You know, you can treat the entire family. You can treat somebody from birth until they're older in age, which is really, you know, a great aspect of family medicine. But for me, I don't fully enjoy the chronic management of diseases. And I feel like it, it can really become mundane and routine. Um, I felt at times um, frustrated with some of the patients who knew what they needed to be doing with their health, but just refused to do it. So, I mean, family physicians are needed. They're amazing. You know, they're the first line point of contact for patients. But again, just not for me. It's just not something I can see myself doing long term for my full career. But now that I have completed this rotation, I can definitely understand why people will go into family medicine. All right, so exam day is tomorrow. I'm just going to continue to do some studying throughout the evening. Just um, look over a few last minute like high yield points that I need to review. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Whoa, <laughs> that was a tough exam but happy to finally be done and done with family medicine it was a good six week rotation hopefully you guys were able to get a good glimpse uh, for the past few vlogs of what family medicine is like um I have the weekend off and then i start up on internal medicine on monday so if you enjoyed this video make sure to give it a thumbs up make sure you subscribe and i'll see you in the next one bye guys